Uh, speaking of the trading thing, which is a lot of trade discourse uh, on uh, Saturday when it was announced that Jake DeBrusque would be scratched from Saturday night's game in LA due to being late to a team meeting. Everyone, I think in LA, everyone's like, oh God, what did he do? You know, what was he doing out there? Uh, and he was just late to a team meeting, um, gets scratched. And then I thought he was a lock to score on Sunday. I thought that was like, oh, that's an easy one. And as he was going in on the breakaway, I think it was, was it a shorthanded breakaway? I think it, it was, was shorthanded. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking as he's coming in, I'm like, I should have freaking bet that. Anytime goal scored, Jake DeBrusque. Uh, didn't end up scoring, but was effective. Um, should we be worried about Jake DeBrusque and his standing with the Bruins? Uh, I mean, I don't really think so. I mean, both Montgomery and, uh, I guess most importantly, Montgomery said, you know, shit happens. You know, these things do happen occasionally. DeBrusque was accountable after the game, you know, wasn't a wasn't a Devontae Parker situation or anything like that. Like, guy, What do you think? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The guy, uh, you know, DeBrusque admitted that he messed up there. You can't have that. You have to be accountable in that spot. So I think it was warranted from Montgomery to sit him, and, you know, DeBrusque acknowledges it. You know, I don't know if – I don't think you should really read into in terms of, like, what, what is he trying to do? Is, is he trying to get off the team? Is he not ha- – like, no, I don't – I wouldn't put any credence at all into that. You, you don't want to see it, especially from a guy that's, you know, 27 has been around for a while. Um, but I think it's all about how he builds off of it. And you look at how he played in that game against Anaheim, especially with Patra. If you can put that in the past and have it be something that gets uh, forgotten in a couple of weeks and a month or so, and he's producing, I think all gets forgiven there. I don't think this is a situation where you should read into it all in terms of his standing or where he wants to go. I think he wants to be here long-term, um, but he's going to have to produce and, and warrant whatever that new contract is. And, at least Sunday seemed like a step in the right direction for him. And if he can get some chemistry with Potter and Gigi, who have been really good together, it sure helps out the Bruins, right? Yeah, it does. I also think it's definitely not intentional on DeBrusque's part because it's a contract year. This is yes. a big year. Yes, you don't want to miss games. You don't really want to... move to be like, I'm going <laughs> to intentionally be late and it hurt my value in my contract year just because I'm supposedly not happy or whatever narrative you want to throw out there. Like, very bold move on his part. That's what he did. It's like George Costanza doing the opposite. Jake DeBrusque's like, yes. you know what? To get my long-term deal, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to take the Stanley Cup uh, trophy from 2011 and drive around with it in the back of the parking lot and let it, uh, you know, roll across the ground. The CLNS Media Network is powered by FanDuel. Sign up at FanDuel.com slash Boston and get in on the action with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. When you place a $5 bet, that's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. I actually like the move by Montgomery. I do. Um, you get standards. You got to hit them. Everybody's got to hit them. And it's one game of 82. You sort of got to you gotta enforce stuff. And I know there were a lot of questions about Montgomery after last season, how much of the team was, was him and how much was Patrice Bergeron and, you know, what was the authority he had over the team. And I think this is something that proves, yeah, he's got, he's the coach. He's the head coach. Um, and I think you got to kind of have those standards uh, and enforce them. I also think it kind of lights a fire under DeBrusque's ass because... He hasn't been producing, uh, th- or he hadn't at the time, through uh, three games a lot. So I think getting him going, um, kind of a wake-up call for him. Tough week for him, by the way. You had that Nesson TikTok that was everybody being like, yeah, he can't pack. He, you know, Does he wash his clothes? Which Jesus, is, again, the most skewered. unsurprising thing ever of like the rest of the team just piling on Jake DeBrusque in, in any oh, yeah. situation. So. But yeah, the timing <laughs> was not great. It wasn't great. And then there was uh, uh, Jakob Lauko put out something, a, a tweet about DeBrusque. I forget what it said, but it was kind of a chirp. And so poor kid, you know, probably, you know, uh, comes to a, late, a meeting late and, uh, you know, has to sit for Saturday's game. But a tough week for DeBrusque, only up from here. Um, and yeah, I agree with you. I don't think uh, this is like, oh, you know, this is. He's on his way out. The trade request is being sent right back in. They're calling Bruce Cassidy back from Vegas. Uh, I don't think that that's happening. I think this is a one-time thing. Again, if it happens again, then yeah, you, have you have something problem. real. Yeah, you, gotta yeah. <laughs> you gotta have a real problem. Stop sleeping through meetings, buddy. Um, but uh, yeah, I think overall, you know, not something to be super worried about back in the lineup um, on Sunday. So uh, that is that.